Hey, church, welcome to a brand new episode of Short Church. I got to be honest with you. This is unlike any other short church we've ever done. You know what? No, scratch that. This is unlike any church we've ever done. We are here at the brand new SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles, California, and we are literally minutes away from the Freedom Experience with Justin Bieber, Chance the Rapper, Jaden Smith, Tori Kelly, Chandler Moore, Carrie Job, hosted by one of my best friends in the whole world, Jason Kennedy. It's going to be incredible. To say I'm excited is an understatement. Now, what we're about to show you is a moment where Justin, who is also one of my best friends in the whole world, invites me on the stage to tell the story about our Jesus, the Jesus that has changed his life and changed my life. It's, uh, it's gonna be 10 minutes or so, and uh, I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that it encourages you. Uh, this is being shot right now before I even do it. So I'm hoping it goes well and um, that everyone here at the SoFi Stadium feels encouraged and anyone watching. But I want to remind you, we love you. Our church exists to serve you and help you in any way we can. And I am hoping this short church episode lifts your spirits, gives you new perspective, and more importantly, reminds you how truly loved you are by God. Well, here we go. Some of you, I don't know, um, you might not be used to this kind of atmosphere, but what you're feeling right now is the presence of God. And he doesn't, he doesn't need perfect people. He just wants to use average, ordinary, broken people like us, you know? I'm tired of religion, you know? I'm tired of religion, I'm tired of division, you know? I just wanna know what it looks like to love people, you know? I wanna, I wanna know that Jesus who goes to where the broken people are. No one's got it together, you know? We do got a hope. And his name is Jesus, and he's changed my life. He's changed my life, man. He's changed my life. And so tonight, um, I'm going to have my brother. Oh, I'm going to cry. I'm going to have my brother, who is... Um, who's also changed my life. His name is Judah Smith. And I want him to, um, I want him to share a little bit about what's, what's changed my life. And so I can't look at you or else I'm gonna cry. So just do not, what you do. I'm not gonna look at you either. Um, thank you, Justin, for the opportunity Tonight is about the celebration of each other. It's about the celebration of humanity. It's about the freedoms we can use to serve each other and love each other and take care of one another. And so before I take just a few brief moments, I wanna say, and I wanna join with every artist who has said it, thank you for loving your neighbor for serving your fellow man and making a difference in the streets of Los Angeles on this day. Thank you. You know, tonight is not about you believing what Justin and I believe. It's 
not about you believing what Chandler Moore and I believe or Tori Kelly believes. It's, it's about knowing that you are of infinite value on this earth. And you are so important. And your life is so significant. And more than anything, we want you to leave this stadium knowing that you are seen and you are heard and you are loved. And we believe in you. And we again, we want to say thank you for being here. Tonight is not about me persuading you to believe, again, like I said, what we already believe. But, but I would like to tell you about a person who's changed my life. I'd like to tell you a story about a man who truly lived and still lives. I am exhausted with the traditions and customs and pageantry of mere religion. We are living in a day and an age, if there is a God, let that God be seen and heard and experienced. We, at the Freedom Experience, we are passionate about you experiencing a person, not a dogma or a motto or a doctrine or wearing merch. We are here because we believe that there is a creator. We believe that there is a sky maker, a mountain maker, a river maker, an ocean maker, an animal maker, and oh, there is a human maker. And with everything he designs and everything he creates, there is intent and there is beauty and there is majesty and there is significance and there is importance, and that's you. There was a man born in Bethlehem he was born in a barn. He was born with very little pageantry and very little celebration, but he would grow. By the age of 30, he began a very public ministry of speeches and miracles. People began to gather around this man by the thousands. He did not claim to be a mere prophet. He did not claim to be a mere preacher or speaker or even one who points the way. He claimed to be the way. He actually claimed to be skin and bone God. He actually said, I'm God amongst you. In all of your searching, in all of your cravings, in all of your appetites, in all of your desires, it is you, God, that we're searching for. One of the titles given for God, not used much, is the desire of all nations. Whether we know it or not, there is within each and every one of us an unrelenting desire to connect with the one that put our lips, hips, and fingertips together. There is something inside of us that cries out, there must be more to this life than the curation of things and stuff, reputation, renown, or money. Why are we here? Why are we here together at the same time? Why are we living at the same time? What is the point of it all. Jesus said, let me surmise life itself. It is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. It was in that earthly ministry that Jesus began to tell the crowds of thousands, I'm going to die. People begin to murmur and whisper. They begin to wonder, why would you die? If you're God, why would you die? And he began to explain in so many different ways with so many different metaphors and analogies. He said, I'm going to die for you. For the Bible says that all of us have erred. We have wronged. We are selfish. We have hurt one another. We have hurt ourselves. We have done things that by definition are wrong. Bible says God came in the person of Jesus and he never committed one wrong act. He was perfect. He was sinless. And so he began to tell the crowds that begin to gather. He said, I'm going to die for your error and your wrong and your sin. Why? Because the ancient scriptures declares that the wages of our error and our wrong is death that we will have to pay for our selfishness someday unless there was a man like you and me who had no sin who could pay for yours and for mine. 
My brothers and sisters, we are not here tonight to talk about a mythical man. We are here tonight to talk about a man. There is more proof that Jesus Christ lived than Abraham Lincoln. This is a true historical figure. And the reason we are here tonight is because we believe that Jesus is the only human being in history who predicted his death, burial, resurrection, and pulled it off. He said, I will die. But even his closest friends forgot. He said, but on the third day, I will prove to humanity once and for all that I am God in the flesh. And here's how I will do it. I will prove to everyone that I am God because I will get up from the grave and nobody does that. That's what I'll do. But I'll, I'll do it so you know my message is true, that my love is true, that my forgiveness is true, that my freedom is true. So he got up and he rose on the third day and he appeared to hundreds. See, you may not know the history of the teachings of Jesus, but now millions and billions of people follow this man from the Middle East, but they do not follow him because his words were nice and rhythmic. They follow him because hundreds begin to tell everyone we were witnesses. We saw him alive after he had been crucified between two thieves. We saw him again. He beat death. He is God. He is the champion. He is the savior. He is the deliverer. He is the hope. He is the... I want Jesus. You don't have to want Jesus. That's not what this is about. But wouldn't it be untruthful of us to stand on this stage, this extraordinary, my brother and my friend, you have watched his journey. The nations have watched this man's life since he was 14 years old. And I gotta tell you, we've been brothers for a long time. But this miracle you see sitting in front of you, this was not the doing of any person or mere therapy, and therapy is important. But I am telling you, this man's life has been saved and transformed, not by religion, dogma, doctrine, church services, conferences, or retreats. It has been the person of Jesus, the resurrection and the life. And we are officially in love. That's what we are, we're in love with Jesus. So give me Jesus and keep your religion. Give me Jesus and keep your morality. Give me Jesus and keep your elitism. Give me Jesus and keep your prejudice. What I need is the real God to stand up and set me free. That's what I need. There must be more. And getting up and going to work and getting a paycheck and being a nice person, there must be more. Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth, and, and I'm the life. And I, I have to say, I, I hang on his every word. I, I need him in the morning, I need him during the day, I need him at night. I, I, what you see on this stage is really, really average broken people that God has forgiven and it is that forgiveness that has set us free. I have good news and the preacher is done. Who knew there would be a preacher at the Freedom Experience? I'm done, I'm done. You know, the Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin so that you and I might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Maybe you've heard that before, but please let me just unpack it just for a second. That means every wrong, every sin, every error, every mean, ugly deed you've ever committed, past, present, or future, you can simply receive the free gift of forgiveness. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to deserve it. You don't have to act right, talk right, live right. You don't have to do any of those religious traditions and customs that you've heard. You are welcome at the table with Jesus. You are welcome in his family. He he loves you and here's the good news we came to tell you tonight and I'm done you are already forgiven all you've got to do is receive it all you've got to do is accept it you are forgiven you are accepted you are loved you are God you are in the palm of his hand I'm telling you we got good news out here we got good news out here Los Angeles I said we got good news the best.
best band to preach with, by the way. So if, if you don't mind, we're going to celebrate our freedom. And what freedom means to us is the freedom from all of our shame, our guilt, our feelings of being disqualified and not good enough and smart enough and good looking enough and talented enough. It is Jesus that has changed that for us and now we know we are accepted, we are forgiven and we are loved. So, here's the simple opportunity that sits before you. The beautiful thing is, is across this room and on this stage, there are so many different beliefs, so many different people and so many different places in the spiritual spectrum, and we celebrate you on your journey. Please hear me. This is not a pressure moment. You don't have to believe what Justin and I believe, but we... We felt it would be disingenuous not to tell you that it's him, it's him, it's him, it's him, it's Jesus, it's, he's the one that saved our lives, he's the reason we're living, it's, it's him, and if you would like to follow him, the opportunity is yours. All it takes is one moment of receptivity, all it takes is one moment of saying, yeah, Jesus, I actually take you at your word and believe that you are who you are. But here's the good news. No matter what you believe, you are loved. And you are celebrated. So I'm going to do what preachers do. And I'm going to say a prayer. And we're going to be done. But here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you're at a place, not because of an artist or speaker or a song, but if you're in a place going, you know what, this is my time. Oh my word, holy cow, this is my time. I, I'm gonna become one of those Jesus people. I'm gonna become one of those Jesus followers. I, I, guess I, I guess this is my time where I become a Christian. You don't have to. This is no, but if that's what you want and you feel like, man, I, I think that's what I'm supposed to do. If God is persuading you, then so be it. If you would like to receive the free gift of forgiveness that only Jesus offers because he paid for it, while I say this prayer, you go ahead and just agree with me, okay? Y'all mind if we pray just for a moment? Come on, join me in prayer. So God, we step back again and we recognize your presence in this room. You are here and it is astounding. You are the God of the whole earth and you're the God of every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of my voice. I thank you that forgiveness flows freely here. And whom Jesus forgives is forgiven forever and completely. So we say yes to you, God. And I pray for every person of the sound of my voice. I pray they would, no matter what they believe, they would feel loved and accepted and celebrated. We pray these things to you because of you, and we say thank you. And if you're willing, would you say amen? Would you say amen?